brings our minds to the glory of God being manifested in the presence of three disciples together with Jesus Christ on Mount Tabor. I therefore entreat all of us to reflect on the hymn 166 from the Catholic hymn now. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and thus that bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Looking at the first stanza, our attentions are drawn to the fact that we are without even a single plea. This shows how miserable we are, but because of the blood, our Savior is bidding us to come and join just in the transfiguration, where the apostles were not even qualified to climb the mountain, but because of the love of Christ, which has no boundary, they were privileged to see the glory of God. Let us all remember that no matter our condition, our Lord Jesus Christ is calling us in this season of Lent to come and see the glory of God. In the second stanza, we are challenged with how we've been tossed about, how our lives are conflicting and full of doubts with experiencing the glory of God. The condition even worsens with the inner fightings within our hearts and the fears without. But in spite of all these, the Son of God calls us to come to the glory of God. See how loving, caring, and kind-hearted our Lord is. This shows us clearly from the second stanza that the transfiguration as well as the glory of God is always readily available. Dear people of God, we have with us the St. Francis de Sales Cathedral Choir from Cape Coast to give us the first set of songs. And it goes, I heard the voice of Jesus say, followed by God of mercy, and then just as I am. Finally, 40 days and 40 nights. Sing with us.
people of God. The third stanza in the Catholic Hymnal 166 brings our minds to our greatest needs, which is to find in our Savior the healing of the mind as it happened on the day of transfiguration. Because after they, the disciples, seeing the glory of God, their corrupted minds were freed from all negative things. The fourth stanza also, therefore, reminds us of the Lord's promise, which we believe that He will welcome, pardon, cleanse, and relieve us of all our sins and iniquities. See how comforting it is to come to Christ Jesus. Again, our choir will give us, dear Lord and Father of mankind. It will be followed by Lord for tomorrow and its needs. And then Shremi, 
wo kwampa ye nyi kwampa biara ka Jesus Christ osure ja nyankopon ne kwampa no ho enti wo maye mfado wo maye mboe ye na akumem na Christ nara on chere ye ne kwampa no
the last but one stanza goes ahead to assure us of how our numerous barriers have been broken by the unknown love of Christ Jesus and hence has made us his and only his. A clear example of freedom in Christ Jesus. The last stanza therefore summarizes all into our being on earth for a divine purpose. I therefore encourage you and I for us to come to the loving Savior to see the glory of our Lord as the three disciples saw on the day of transfiguration. The choir will now give us and then Jai Nkomo, Jai Ohau, Inne Sui, Nadani Nara, Uma Jesus. But before that, our Reverend Father John Bernard Beecham will give us an exaltation. Dearly beloved, the peace of the Lord be with you. It's heartwarming to be in the presence of God to listen to beautiful hymns, music that refreshes the soul. And not only that, we also listen to a reflection on God's word. Today, the second Sunday of Lent, we, we reflect on, on, again, on three readings. And I reflect with you on the theme, Lent, a means to an end. Lent is a preparatory period and it looks forward to Easter. So it prepares us for Easter. So as a means to an end, the end is that glory of Easter. And today the readings lead us to reflect on that end, that glory. That is what the readings lead us. But before that, already the opening prayer or the collect preempts this theme, a means to an end. And this is what the priest prays that, O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. As a means to an end, we need to cleanse our sight so as to be able to see that glory. And today, in the Gospel reading in Luke chapter 9, Jesus brings the disciples to the mountain so that they will see his glory. And he opens a window. In that window, they see that glory. It is the glory of a new life, life that is eternal, life that doesn't end. And what is this? We see Moses and Elijah. We know in Deuteronomy that Moses died and was buried by God. And today, till today, we do not know where he was buried. And Elijah also was carried up in a chariot of fire. And so this window shows that life, a new life. We are preparing for a life, a life that Easter brings. And in that life, we will live forever and ever. We are preparing for this glory. How do we prepare for this glory? The collector already talks about listening to Jesus Christ. That is what the voice said at the, on the mountain. That this is my beloved son, listen to him. How do we listen? We listen to the word of God. And the word of God is one of those things that prepares us during this season. And so we read God's word, we reflect on it, and then we relate with God's word. So that is one of the things. The second thing is we need to have faith in God's word. Faith. And how do we manifest that faith we have? It is by our works. It is by our actions. The first reading we see the encounter between Abram and God. God had promised Abram that his descendants will be many, uncountable. And then he puts this question to God, how? So God brings him. And then God wants to fortify his faith. So God asks him, there's going to be a covenant between God and Abram. So God asks Abram to bring certain animals. And he cuts them into two, leaving the birth of the birth. And then as the sun came down, God passed through this. So the glory of God appeared in the, in the symbolism of a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch. Now, we see two images here. Abraham was asleep. In the gospel reading, the disciples 
were heavy with sleep, but they stayed awake, sleep. And uh, there are certain things that become stumbling blocks to our uh, beholding God's glory. And that is what we are preparing in this Lenten season to do away with. Already, Paul gives examples and he gives indication of these weaknesses in the second reading from Philippians chapter 3. And he says that their God is their belly and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. These are the things that cloud our vision. These are the things that will prevent us from the new life that Easter brings. These are the things that, that, that will be our stumbling block. We will be prevented from seeing that glory of Easter. And so this Lenten season means to get off that so as we're able to see the glory of God. They are, they are, they are, their end, our end, if we do not, will be destruction. We glory in our shame. We glory in the fact that we have been able to outwit somebody. I am happy that I have cheated somebody and I have stolen somebody's money. I am happy. And I think myself so wise that I have been able to cheat somebody to get so much from the person. But what is the end? What do I get from that? I am happy that I have gossiped about somebody. I am happy that I have tarnished somebody's image. I am happy that I have destroyed somebody's fame. Should I be happy about this? My dear friend, this is the time to think about these, to reflect on these, so that our spiritual sight will be made pure so that we will see the glory of God. This, again, is made or referred to in the, the preface that we prayed today, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. Everything we are doing now is a means to an end. And if we take what we are doing seriously, we will definitely attain the glory of the resurrection. My dear friends in Christ, this is the time to do self-introspection to reflect on our lives, to see what is preventing us from seeing the glory of God. What is, what is making us sleep so that we don't see that glory of God? This is the time to reflect. The glory is for us. And Jesus Christ, to whet our appetite, today brings all of us to the mountain with the disciples. And then he opens his glory to us. And we see the life that Easter will bring. Why don't you reflect on your life so that you embrace this glory? Glory that brings inner peace. Glory that brings salvation. Glory that brings joy to our lives. Glory that facilitates our attainment of eternal life. May God give us this grace. And this day may God minister to you. May you have the opportunity and the grace of journeying with Jesus to the mount where he is transfigured. And may you have the opportunity of hearing his voice. And not only hearing, but heeding that voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. May God bless and keep you the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
thank you, Father, for the wonderful exaltation. I believe we will all keep it, remind ourselves all the time, and walk with it as we go. The choir will now give us Hina Nedo Se Yesu and then Nyena Sor Denina. A kwam tri bri mwize. Or de ye nyen. Or de ye sor. A bri biara. De ma Christ. O ye wa sar no dono. E de yen su ye bomadin. Na ye nyen. Na ye sor. No kwarimu. Amen.
Lovely people of God, all too soon we are gradually coming to the end of this edition of Laudate Dominum. The choir will give us Mie Zibon Yenyi, which will be followed by Yen Yaminti Yensru. O Womde Yaya Zibon Yafo, Nensu Yamita Sizi, Yerin Suroshe, Yanyaninam Abri Biara, Intel Saifono. On to me, ya yen shi, o sande, ya yen yame, ya yen enam. Nessie botum yena nama, no, no, a quam tree bree, yen fam pie bo, yen fa o do, yen fa a yem ye, ne yen yen yan hopon, en nanto. Till we come your way again with laudate dominum, it's bye for now.
中。